So welcome back everybody, my name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. And today we're gonna make a really quick video to give some updates about the outdoor kitchen that we just got done building, now that we got some use, and answer a few of your popular questions. So first and foremost, thank y'all so much for watching that series. It was a huge success. We have been enjoying the heck out of our outdoor kitchen. We are literally out here every single afternoon. And now that we've had a little cool blast come down here in Florida, it was 59 degrees this morning. It feels amazing. We're gonna continue to stay out here every single afternoon. So hopefully y'all watched the most recent episode to where I built the outdoor bar stools that you can barely see in the screen right there. That really completed the area and just makes this feel like a good useful space. So let's go ahead and dive right in. One of the biggest questions I keep getting from people is, will you give us some quick rundown on dimensions? So absolutely, let's do that. For so for starters, all of the countertop depths on both sides are full 12 by 24 tile depth. It's actually like 23 and three quarters of an inch. I specifically set up the countertops uh, to make sure I could rip down a sheet of half inch plywood or three quarter inch plywood, but right down the middle, they're 48 inches wide, that brings it to 24 for the top. And then that allowed me to fit this trim edge on the side as well as full tiles. So ultimately what I was trying to avoid was having to make a bunch of extra cuts on the tile. I wanted to use them with factory edges as much as I could, and that really made this a lot more DIY friendly. So while we're in this area real quick, something that y'all were very sharp with and I kept forgetting to mention in the build series was this little handle right here. So we ultimately wound up utilizing this window right here as a pass through. And let me tell you, if you can fit one of those in to your outdoor kitchen, this has been one of our favorite features of it right here. It's so nice to be able to prep everything in the kitchen in the house, come to this window, lift it up, and have this big prep area, serving area right here to pass everything through from your oils, your seasonings, your food itself, set it on the counter, close the window back, go in there and do more preparations, and then it's out here waiting for you. You're not going to the door fumbling, holding a bunch of heavy stuff. It's already out here prepped, ready to go. Not to mention when we're done for the night, we have all the dirty dishes, everything else we wanna go back in. We just fill this area up, lift the window, and go right back in. So we purchased online this suction cup right here off of Amazon. I'll try to remember to include a link because we were trying to figure out how do you get the window open from the outside. Inside it's got a handle, outside it does not. So this just presses right on. It's got a little twist knob. Now it's ready to go and we have a handle. Hey, you can holler at somebody in the house, bring me something out. Uh, again, lift it to, to accept food from somebody that may be walking it to you. This pass-through is something I highly recommend that you work into your home. And keep in mind, if you don't have a window there, you can actually cut, modify a home if you really want to get into it. And they make pull-down insulated pass-through doors just for situations like this. All right, so this pass-through area, again, everything's 24 inches depth. Give you all some dimensions since you asked about it. 41 inches wide, and that's including all this trim edge, which was another very popular question. Everybody wanted to know, what was this trim edge right here? So that trim edge is what really set off these tile countertops in my mind, and I knew I wanted to do this from the get-go. So the trim edge I actually got from Home Depot. I had to order it online. It was not available locally in my local store, but it's called Schluter Rondeck Step. And I think this is the inch and three quarter, if I remember correctly. And I make all the little corner attachments, outside corners, inside corners to give you a nice finish edge. Now this stuff is very expensive. It's overpriced in my opinion, way overpriced. And it really shot the build price up. I spent just as much on the trim edge as I did all the tile and everything to put the tile down. But I knew for sure I did not want to do tile capped edges because to me, that does not look like a good finished edge. Now this Schluter system, you can actually get this in aluminum, stainless, bronze, all different kinds of colors. We actually chose to paint ours because we just weren't quite happy with the look that we were sent and we were trying to match it up stainless. Long story short, we got the wrong stuff in, made a last minute decision to paint it, and now we're very happy with it. So you got your dimensions there. As far as the main countertop on this side goes, we are 86 inches. This full back countertop is 88 inches. And this tire section right here is right at 92. I'm stopping right here where this countertop is. 
<clears throat> so ultimately how I come up with those dimensions was this entire back wall on the outside, which is completely different dimensions than the countertop. I did eight foot that way and I did a 10 foot section run this way plus that 80 something inches I just told you right here. The refrigerator's been working awesome. A lot of people are concerned about it being glass front. It does get condensation on really hot days. Uh, I don't hear the compressor running 24 seven. It's been doing a really good job. Sink right here, 28 wide, I forget the depth here. I do have a lot of this stuff listed on the final build video if you want the links to go to Amazon where I purchased a lot of this. The only thing I've been a little unhappy with is this uh, faucet right here, it bends too far out this direction, so it makes washing your hands want to splash water up here. I'm probably going to change this design out to something that's bent a little further down like that to where you're washing your hands in the center of the sink. I'm going to shoot to a clip real quick and show you what I did to strap this TV down for all the high winds and afternoon thunderstorms that we get here in Florida because the TV was a big concern of mine about blowing around. Okay, so one area I have been highly concerned about is this TV mount. I purposely got one that can pivot and look everywhere over the porch for obvious reasons, but this can catch a ton of wind. We get severe afternoon thunderstorms here, especially in the uh, summertime, and then our cold fronts get really nasty here as well in the wintertime. Not to mention hurricanes and everything else, although I'll take this down for a hurricane but it will not take much wind or a bad storm to get behind this, snatch it, slam it against the house and do some serious damage. So it's gonna be very hard to show this, but if you look up on the bottom side of this TV mount right here, I drilled a hole there and up there before I ever installed this because I knew there was something I wanted to do. I'm gonna put one of these eyelet bolts there and up top so I can strap this TV. So I just picked up a couple of these right here I'll run a nut top and bottom on this, install it through that hole, cinch it down, and now I have somewhere that I can hook one of these special style scent straps that I got. Okay, so here's a quick look at what I've done. You see I got that hook top and bottom, and now because it's in that very sturdy mount that's lag bolted to the wall, this isn't going anywhere. All right, so I just cut the strap off. I had a lot of excess. Burnt the ends with a torch right here. Just gonna leave me a tag in out here that I can pull as tight as I want. Now, the TV cannot come out any further than that. I don't wanna damage anything because I've got this strap that goes all the way over and I use one of these push button scent straps right here because they're perfect for situations just like this. You just press that to release and pull your strap right out. We're not looking for a big ratchet strap here and something really tight or we're gonna wind up damaging the TV itself. All right, so as y'all can see, we have this strapped uh, to the frame itself now, to the actual wall hanger. It can move a little, but it's not just gonna flip out and blow around in high afternoon thunderstorm winds. I do not wanna damage my TV. That was another very common question I had. People kept saying, well, we store our remotes out here for everything, we have multiple remotes. People are concerned about moisture damaging the remotes and moisture with the TV. While we haven't had the outdoor kitchen for very long, we've had it long enough that we've already experienced quite a few um, very foggy mornings, things damp. We've had some very severe thunderstorms. It's actually blew rain up here and wet everything. And my old $350 TV that is not an outdoor rated TV is working flawlessly. No issues with none of the remotes as well. So using this old cheap 30 or $40 outdoor cover, did an excellent job and I still love this cover. It's a bit cumbersome to put off and on every single day, but I got to price in a like Sunbright TV that's made just for outdoors. For example, in this size, a true outdoor rated one is like $1,800. Well, I can buy several of these $300 TVs for the price of one of those. I think I'm gonna keep taking the risk right here and using an indoor TV. Just get you a really good cover. This one seals completely around, back and all, so there's not much moisture to get in there. Although, I am very curious about the continuous humidity that we get. I'll go ahead and let everybody know too that's building an outdoor kitchen, a wall fan is a must. We run a pedestal fan, which is right beside you, a misting fan. Oh man, it's, that's just been awesome on the hot days. This wall fan, it's very important. One, it cools off guests if we need it. It cools you off while you're at a very hot Blackstone cooking. But if y'all have watched a lot of our live streams where we cook every single Sunday. So this metal edge back here behind the Blackstone itself, well, it can get quite hot to the touch. But as soon as you kick that fan on, even on low speed, the way it 
comes in here, blows air across this. You can hold your hand to it for the rest of the time you're cooking. And more importantly, it blows all that heat down off the bar, does not blow it on gas like we originally were scared that it would, and it cools you off while you're cooking. There's no way I'd have an outdoor kitchen, especially with a Blackstone emitting all this heat without that fan. Our old cheap five burner cooktop's been working awesome. We picked up uh, quite a bit of cast iron for this. We've already been frying on it. We got some extended cast iron pans that'll go over two burners uh, for the little bit of frying that we do do. We got big cast iron woks that'll work on this. So we'll show some cooking here before long coming up on the channel. Zero issues with the Blackstone working great. Zero issues with any of the gas hookups, by the way. Uh, apparently the, everything was sized correctly as far as the tubing and hose and everything else that it ran. Um, no issues at all, and we've used both of these quite a bit. One other thing that I really want to mention to everybody that's building an outdoor kitchen, discovered this little device right here. So when you're doing all these gas and propane hookups, whether that's uh, natural gas or propane, whatever the heck it is that you're running, there's obviously a big risk of leaks as you're doing all these multiple hookups. Let's just face it, it, it can happen. I thought gas testers were quite expensive. This little guy right here is $20 on Amazon. So here's the brand, Top Test. I'll put a link down there as well. Do yourself and your family a favor, grab one of these for 20 bucks, man. I, I wish I had known about this while I was building this. So what I've done is I've gone back now and tested every single one of my propane hookups. So all you do is power this little guy on. It's got a sniffer right here at the end. I find this a lot easier to use than the soap and water method that I was using. Okay, so I'll just turn on a little bit of gas right here. You let this go sniffing around any of your hookups or connections. Hear it beeping at me, it's saying, hey, I'm smelling something. It lit up red when I got near the leak and it's got a little scale that goes up and tells you, I guess, how much it's smelling, how significant the leak is. This is a must have, especially if you potentially have a leak inside a, a closed space like a cabinet. You could wind up with a major explosion if you have a bad enough leak. So do yourself a favor, pick up one of these for 20 bucks. So the other concern that people had and kept mentioning was this propane hookup that I ran down here about dirt daubers getting in, bugs, plugging it up. So I started out by using caps just like this. And they actually look really good capping over it and making it look black just like the vent. Problem is, I have a puppy now, and he discovered these, and he pulls every single one off that I put on. So we just had a viewer, Mr. Donald, send us in. I don't know if I can get this unscrewed by hand. Yes, here it comes. An actual brass uh, fill plug. This is pretty neat right here. So thank you, Mr. Donald, for sending that in. Now, my puppy is not going to chew through that. And this is designed to thread on the inside of your standard propane hookup. And now I can keep dirt daubers and everything else out of there. So I wish I could have all that look black, but until the puppy grows up and quits pulling my black covers off, that's the way we're gonna leave it right there. So now we have full propane hookup for fish cookers and anything else that we wanna run right here at the end of the outdoor kitchen. Okay, back to measurements here. I had a lot of people ask, I went with a 12 inch wide tile right here. And then whenever you add in the two caps right here, we're at 12 and three quarters of an inch. And the reason I did that is because again, no point in making a bunch of extra long, odd cuts on a piece of tile. Went with 12 inches, that's plenty, plenty wide enough. We've already had cookouts and everything out here to put a plate up here, do a little eating, to you know lounge on, put your drinks up here. And I didn't have to cut any tiles down. And I did not want to go any wider because now you're starting to get a crazy overhang that's difficult to support. And you're gonna wind up with little rip down strips of tile. So just run your standard 12 by 24 inch tile here. No complaints with this whatsoever. I think the size is perfect. Now we did build the bar top a bit high. A lot of people asked for the measurements for that. And you can see why with me standing right here, it is the perfect height to lean on. So we knew we wanted a side with seating and we left this other side over here for standing. So you can get a lot of guests around here while we're entertaining. I am 100% satisfied with the height that we chose. No bending over, not too high, but this is an extra tall bar top. So finished height for the people that were asking, 
is 45 and one half of an inch. I think your standard bar height is 42 inches, which we found far too low. Now, because these bar tops are a bit high, we had to build our final stool height right here. I just got done custom building these right here. Check that video out if you haven't. But these bar stools finished height are 31 and a half inches, so kind of an odd size there, but that height was needed, so you could get a nice, comfortable seating position right here. Again, I can't stand a bar that's too low that I have to bend over on and have my back all arched, and obviously you don't want one up here like this where you feel like a little kid, but for us and our height, this was perfect. Some people asked in the bar stool build video, what was the height that I put the footrest at? Let's go ahead and cover that. So I did it from the seat height. So from the top of the seat down to the top of the footrest, 15 inches. And I pulled that off of a factory built bar stool that I have out in the shop and 15 felt perfect. A lot of people were really concerned about the stick on under bar lights that we did. I mean, I have like a whopping $14 in them, but zero issues. Nothing has peeled off, very good adhesive. They're working great. No problems. Another popular question I got asked, I forgot to put the rubber mat in the last final build video. We got this right off of Amazon. Uh, it's a three millimeter or right at one eighth inch thick rubber mat. And then you have the ridges on top of that bringing everything to about a quarter inch thickness. The mat was very affordable. I think like 50, 50 something dollars. It's nice, easy to sweep and clean out. Really like having that rubber mat in here. Plus it ties everything together color wise. And I'll try to make sure I put a link in this video for that for the people that's been asking. And for all the people that said a kitchen is not complete until your junk drawer is complete. Well, I think we're there y'all. Junk drawer 100% complete. I'm driving my wife crazy with how much stuff I'm keeping in this one. <laughs> so as far as all the stainless doors and trash pullouts, things like that, uh, no issues. Slides are still working great. Hinges are good zero issues. And if people show a lot of interest, we may show a future video with how we're filling all these up, some essentials that we want out here. But to be perfectly honest with you, we're still figuring out a lot of this. People were highly concerned about rodents and bugs as well. As you can see, we have almost everything in snap-proof enclosures. My wife went to Costco and bought a bunch of these containers right here. This is how we're keeping our cast iron, pots, pans, everything. And these actually have a gasketed seal. So this should keep roaches, ants, obviously mice, everything else out. So the majority of our stuff is in full enclosures. Plenty of mosquito spray. We keep us a nice Bluetooth speaker out here. A lot of people ask why I did not do speakers in the ceiling because that Bluetooth speaker out there from Costco that we've had for quite a while is amazing. And speaking of that Bluetooth speaker, I actually bought a Bluetooth adapter that plugs right into the back side of the TV, into the USB port, and then goes into the headphone jack on the side of this TV, and it broadcasts out a Bluetooth signal that my speaker will pick up. And we can put that speaker right up here on the counter, side, anywhere we want and it gets extremely loud. That speaker can also pair with an additional speaker if we're having a huge get together and want to get crazy loud. I'm talking, it's louder than I ever need. The good thing is we bought that for a whopping $99. Every, uh, it's usually every fall, every winter, this time of year, they'll put them on sale at Costco. They're like originally 150. Everybody we know has them, all of our friends excellent speaker. So that's why I didn't go through all the trouble of putting sound bars in and speakers in the ceiling. I, believe it or not, that's what I used to do for a living. I, I owned a, a business doing that way back in the day. And you can get so much money tied up in that. These Bluetooth speakers are so good nowadays. For $99, we get all the sound, all the music out here that we ever need. So for all the other people that were concerned about certain things, I'm seeing absolutely no cracks in any of the grout. I've been really watching that, especially being that we've just went, we were 92 or 93 degrees one day this week in the 50s this morning. We're seeing huge temperature fluctuations. So you're gonna get expansion and contraction. No issues with tiles popping up. We're gonna watch that throughout the winter once we start getting really cold here. Everything looks great thus far. One thing I will say that caught me a little off guard, when you're frying with the black stone, you know, there's steam that comes up. Well, I kind of always considered that being moisture. There's a lot of oil in that steam. 
So as the fan is blowing, well, you wind up with a very oily surface over here and countertop. That's been no issues. The tile and grout sealed great. I see no discolorations, but just thought I'd mention that for people as you set up your outdoor kitchen. All that steam that's coming off is carrying more oil and grease with it than I could have ever imagined. But a quick wipe down at the end of the night, no issues, and I'm just going to stay on top of sealing my tile and grout, you know, once a year, maybe twice a year. It's such a quick and simple process. Okay, so let's talk for a second and be honest. Things that I'm happy with, man, I I'm really happy with the layout. Uh, the whole cook space, everything. I really am. And we've got enough drawers and, you know, countertop space to prep. I wish we had bigger prep area on this side of the Blackstone. So because we've got so much cooktop going on here, your food kind of winds up over here. And it's nice to have a big area right where your Blackstone is, where you got bowls, pots, and pans. So if we're not using this cooktop, well, we kind of set stuff up here on top of this, but I do wish we had a little more room here so you could do multiple sheet pans, bowls, and maybe lay your utensils down when you're cooking on the Blackstone. But we've got a fix for that. So I would say give yourself a little more working area around your main cook appliance. Only other thing I wish I'd have done, and this goes all the way back to when I was building the house and framing in, I wish I had put my blocking and had the TV a little more centered. A lot of y'all have spoken up about, man, holy moly, my OCD's wigging out that your TV is not centered. Plus that would, although this does not block the fan, believe it or not, it would, it would just make things look a little better. I wish the TV is a little more centered. It is what it is right now. I wanted to make sure that I've got it up there on that blocking. So probably the last thing that I'm kind of jonesing for, and I didn't think I was gonna want one out here, is a floor model ice maker. That's something I kind of think we're probably going to integrate into this. So last week when we had that big get together, I could have went through 100 plus pounds of ice with everybody that was kind of needed it. Now I'm starting to think toward next year when we get a deck and a pool and we're entertaining having guests over. If people want to bring their coolers, I'd love for them to have somewhere to scoop. Again, we want to do all that food prep, make all those drinks. It's just, I can foresee an ice maker getting used a lot out here. Uh, I'm kind of concerned about that for energy usage and a few other things, but I mean, when you build one of these spaces, you build it to enjoy and use. Okay, well, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Yes, it was a bunch of talking and rambling. There was so many of the same types of questions. I thought I would make a video, especially get the dimensions out. That was one of the big things that people have been asked for. Oh, the other thing I forgot to give y'all, countertop working height. Typically, you do 36 inches, which is standard. We went a little higher on that as well. We're at 38 inches. That would be as high as I would possibly recommend for working or shorter people. But we did that so we could fit all the drawers and stuff underneath the Blackstone and we had to come up to a certain height. Plus Tiffany prefers higher countertop working area uh, than even what we have inside with your typical kitchen cabinets. But 38 feels very nice and comfortable. I don't necessarily recommend going any higher than that. Okay, that was the popular questions that I'm constantly getting. Thought it made more sense to uh, make a video answer those for you. We're enjoying the heck out of this space. You're going to see it used a lot on the channel. And the good news is coming up in some future videos, I'm going to custom build our outdoor furniture out here. We got the deck coming, the pool, a fire pit area, swings. We have all kinds of stuff planned for our space out here to make our dream home what we've always envisioned it being. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.